and welcome. Outrage trails killing of seven people after suspected herders invaded internally displaced people's camp in Makudi, Benue State. Declare state of emergency over insecurity. House of Representatives ask the president to act and stem the tide of attacks across the country. The president seeks relocation of AFRICOM headquarters to Africa, calls for the assistance of the U.S. in tackling insecurity on the continent. And India's COVID-19 infections and deaths surge as international shipments of medical aid begins to arrive in the country. Yes, we'll have business, sports, news from Abuja, and later on international news from our London studio. On business news tonight, Central Bank disperses 33.45 billion naira to nine distribution companies for procurement of prepaid meters. On sports news tonight, Ayimba squad depleted by injuries and suspension ahead of their crucial CAF Confederation Cup clash against Orlando Pirates tomorrow. And from Abuja, a coalition of civil society organizations mounts pressure on the National Assembly to pass new electoral law before the next general elections in 2023. The trend of wanton killings by bandits across the country continued today, with more innocent souls losing their lives at the hands of the dreaded gunmen. The country again woke up to the news of a gruesome murder of seven persons at an internally displaced persons camp at a town near Makudi, the Benue state capital, allegedly by men suspected to be herdsmen. A peaceful protest broke out as the angry displaced persons blocked the Makuti Lafia Federal Highway, protesting the killing, while the bodies of the victims were laid on the road. They warned that they will take up arms to defend themselves, as according to them, the killings have become a shame. Protesting host community and inmates at the Abagana IDP camp in Makodi, located along the Makodi Lafia Federal Highway concerning the dumping of seven corpses of those killed by suspected herdsmen in the early hours of Tuesday. The IDPs and the host community are chanting protest songs, blocking vehicular movement from both ends, demanding action from the federal government to end the herdsmen invasion, killings and habitation of their ancestral land to allow them return home. We are not happy any longer. They say that we should that we should submit our arms. We have submit our arms. And now the Fulanese, they are attacking us. We don't have any other thing to do. There's no call. There's there anybody that moves with cutlasses that they should arrest him. The Fulanese that move with AK-47 and nobody is here to say anything. Five days ago, they killed so many within the same community. And they have been killing, there have been so many killings. And uh, we, as a community, we say this should be the last killing. Otherwise, we, 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 we go to serve him. Governor Tom, who did not hesitate in calling for gun licensing for his people to repel the attack, asked President Muhammad Buhari to call his kinsmen to order, convene a national security summit, and live up to his responsibility of protecting lives and property before all is lost under his watch. Go to Guma. The same killings are taking place. Go to Gua West. The same killings are taking place. This is not right. The federal government have refused to take proactive steps to arrest this ugly situation that we are witnessing here today. You send these people away from their villages, they came here to take refuge. And today, they are being killed in this manner. Over 70 people have been killed in the last two weeks by this aspect. They no longer come with their cattle. They come because they are looking for lives of God to kill. They have even sent messages that accept lives of God refuse to take their cattle so that they will come and graze on our farms. And this we say no, it will not be accepted. 70 persons, according to the governor, have been killed in the last one month in Benway State, from Gwe West to Agatu, Makodi to Guma, with no actionable intelligence to track the perpetrators just as the statistics for internally displaced persons surpasses over a million people now displaced. 
While the displaced persons in Benue State are lamenting attacks on their camps, fleeing residents of Gedam, a community that was attacked by Boko Haram insurgents last Friday, have finally settled into seven transit camps where they are currently seeking shelter. 6,000 of them were affected by the Boko Haram attack, and the state government says it's supplying palliatives to them at the transit camp since they cannot return home for now. State authorities are hoping for support from the National Emergency Management Agency, NEMA. For every attack, there is an accompanying displacement of people in, the, in, that, in that community. We are talking about like trans, uh, seven transit camps. And the transit camps are, one, because some are waiting for peace to return so that they can go back to their communities, while others are just transiting to get mobility and move to a destination of their family and friends. But for every location, we ensure that water, food, and all these are provided. But of course, it can't be enough because we're in emergency. Talking about the population, <laughs> we have not yet reached the final profiling, but so far, we have profiled over 6,000 displaced persons. And this has also collaborated with the record of International Organization of Migration, IOM. So we have QQ, we are profiling, we are responding to them. From Yobe to Kaduna State, where the bandits who abducted 39 students of the Federal College of Forestry Mechanization in Kaduna have released yet another video of students, including that of a pregnant student pleading to be rescued. They're not giving up yet as they're appealing to the government to secure their release. The students were abducted from their hostels on March the 11th after the bandits attacked the college, located close to the Nigerian Defense Academy. We'd like to warn that the pictures you're about to see may be disturbing. My name is Yahya Paul. I'm from Federal Forest Jam Mechanization. Please, you are calling on our parents to help us to come and take us out of here. They should try their possible best to see us out of here. We are suffering. Some of us are sick. We've not been eating well. Please, parents, help us so that we could come outside from this place. My name is Vichy Sandler from Federal College of Forestry. Mm -hmm. Please, we are calling on our parents to so please come and help us. Mm -hmm. They should please assist us and rescue us from the hands of these people. My name is Benson Emmanuel. Please, we are begging on our parents, please, to come and help us out of here. We've stayed here, we've stayed here for days, we have not been eating, most of us have been sick. Most of us are hungry, please, we're going to be begging on our parents, please come and help us, please, please, we're tired of here, please. Moving down south, this time in Ebonyi State, where gunmen also attacked the Federal High Court in Abakaliki, the state capital, setting ablaze a section of the court building. The library and security sections were raised before firefighters brought the inferno under control. One of the eyewitnesses who spoke to Channel's television says he and his colleagues heard a loud bang, which was followed by gunshots around midnight. No casualty was recorded in the attack, which destroyed court records in the library. And the president may be yielding to calls from several quarters that the federal government needs to seek help to tackle the current security situation in the country. President Muhammad Buhari had a shot at it today during a virtual meeting with the U.S. Secretary of State, Mr. Antony Blinken. President Buhari asked the United States to reconsider relocating the U.S. Africa Command from Stuttgart, Germany, nearer to the theater of operation in Africa. He also pleaded with the international community to support Nigeria and the African sub-region to tackle the growing security challenges to avoid spillovers. On his part, the U.S. Secretary of State was pleased to make Nigeria part of his first virtual visit to Africa, noting that Nigeria and the United States share a lot in bilateral issues. He says areas of future discussion will include how to rebuild economies after the COVID-19 pandemic. The security challenges in Nigeria remain of great concern to us and infected more negatively by existing complex negative pressures in the Sahel, Central Africa, and West Africa, as well 
as the Lake Chad region. Compounded as the situation remains, Nigeria and her security forces remain resolutely committed to containing them and addressing their root causes. The support of important and strategic partners like the United States cannot be overstated as the consequences of insecurity will affect all nations, hence the imperative for concerned cooperation and collaboration of all nations to overcome these challenges. Considering the growing security challenges in West and Central Africa, the Gulf of Guinea, Lake Chad region, and the Sahel weighing heavily on Africa underscores the need for the United States to consider relocating AFRICOM headquarters from Stuttgart in Germany to Africa and near the theater of operations. The president has also been meeting with prominent leaders in the country. He met separately with the former Lagos State Governor Bola Tinubu and former Oshun State Governor Bisi Akonde, as well as the Governor Babagana Zulum of Borono State over the worsening security situation in the country. After the meeting, the APC national leader told State House correspondents that their meeting with the president focused on critical issues affecting the nation. Every nation will go through these curves and difficult times. And I will communicate it to the people, what are the areas to uh, help make it easier uh, for people to be here. Those are ideas you have to be able to exchange with the leadership of, uh, of the country. Cooperation, understanding, and determination, effective security, effective information. Uh, there's no president or leader that will want his nation fractured in tribalism, religious differences, and others. And uh, it calls for serious management and serious evaluation and, and dialogues once in a while. For Governor Zulum, his responsibility is to tell the president the truth as he explains the reason for his visit to the villa. He maintains that there is a need for greater support from the presidency to surmount the insurgency, noting that the military is yet to receive equipment ordered for, which might be responsible for the deteriorating security situation. We will get headquarters what our attack. Many soldiers, men and officers of the Nigerian army were killed. Um, let me use this opportunity to extend my condolences to the families of the deceased. May mm. God in this impenetrable wisdom forgive them. And I think it is my own responsibility to come and say the truth to Mr. President. Let him know what is going on in the entire North East region. I think there is a need for us to get support for us to succeed in this war against insurgents. It's very pathetic. A few days ago, Damasak was attacked. Hundreds of people started fleeing Damasak. And now, uh, the Gadam is almost disaster. Many people have left Gadam. The military are, are yet to receive some of the equipments that they have ordered for. In part two of the break, Senate debates the nation's worsening insecurity. Former Deputy Senate President Ike Kweramadu urges government to seek foreign assistance to tackle the challenge. That's in a moment. Please stay with us. Welcome back. If you've just joined us, you're watching the news at 10 on Channel Television, coming to you live from Lagos. A reminder of our top stories. Outrage trails killing of seven people 
after suspected herders invaded internally displaced people's camp in Makudi, Benue State. Declare state of emergency over insecurity. House of Representatives asked the president to act and stem the tide of attacks across the country. The president seeks relocation of AFRICOM headquarters to Africa, calls for the assistance of the U.S. in tackling insecurity on the continent. And India's COVID-19 infections and deaths surge as international shipment of medical aid begins to arrive the country. Lawmakers in the House of Representatives also continued their quest to address the security challenges confronting the country. And today they held a special session which lasted for over four hours. At the end of the meeting, the Speaker, Honorable Fermi Gwajabi Amila, read out the resolutions reached to include that the President should declare a state of emergency on the security sector and that the military should carry out an audit on the arms and ammunition in its arsenal. The House reiterates its commitment to the security and corporate existence of the Federal Republic of Nigeria and will therefore accelerate its engagement with stakeholders at a special security summit that is being organized by the House of Representatives. Four, the House urgently invites the NSA the service chiefs and paramilitary chiefs and the MD of Niger Comsat to brief the House on the security situation in the country. Five, considering the security situation, the President should immediately declare a state of emergency in the security sector so as to fast track all measures to ensure that the to ensure the restoration of peace in our country the federal government should ensure the protection of national infrastructure and assets particularly the shiroro and kaindi dams in niger state 10 the house mandates all its security committees to immediately commence a comprehensive audit of all military and paramilitary assets and arms, assets, arms, and ammunition in our armed services and revert back to the House within four weeks. 11, that the number of personnel in the police and military falls far short of the required number to effectively secure the country. And, call, and the House calls for immediate recruitment to this effect. The situation is not different in the Senate, but they allowed the media to cover their session, unlike the House of Representatives. It was quite a debate with lawmakers lamenting the devastating insecurity in the country, with a warning from the Deputy Senate President Ike Ekwerimadu that any government who fails to protect its citizens has lost its legitimacy. Our correspondent Linda Akigbe reports. I am a PAPC man and I've been supporting my party, but the president should get to know that it has gone to a point that we who are supporters, who are members of the APC, we can no longer keep quiet. The president was raised to the occasion. You know, say we I saw you not see the truth and you are afraid to say it because you will die? We must open, Mr. President, the nation is on fire. Senator Smata Deyemi from President Buhari's political party passionately appealing to him to resolve the security crisis in the country. A day after the Niger state governor sounded an alarm that Boko Haram terrorists have taken over a part of his state, hoisting their flag in Kaure village. The Senate is debating the disturbing situation in Niger state and general insecurity in the country. Lawmakers appear fed up with the vicious killings in different parts of the country and do not seem to be confident in the ability of President Buhari to resolve the security situation. I don't intend to re-emphasize the fact that any government that cannot protect, protect its citizens, whether it is local government or state or federal, has lost legitimacy. We had COVID-19 in this country in year 2020. 
Some states were shut down in order to deal with that situation. I think this time has come for a place like Niger State to be completely shut down and protect their citizens. There is no political will. None of us here can say we know the process that this government intends to use to battle insecurity. We need to have a private session with the commander-in-chief of the armed forces of this country as a Senate to find a permanent and lasting solution to this huge national embarrassment. While some Nigerians question the ability of President Buhari to address the security crisis, the move of the motion on insecurity in Niger State warns of any plans to impeach the president. It is not about impeachment. What is the solution? You and I knows what impeachment is all about. It's another crisis into another crisis. In the meantime, the Senate has agreed on some steps to tackle the security challenge, which includes asking the Chief of Army Staff and Inspector General of Police to immediately deploy troops to defend troubled communities and urge them to establish permanent military and a police base at the Axis adjoining Shiruru and Rafi local government areas of Niger State. Linda Kibi, Channels Television News. Anyone traveling by road to river states from other parts of the country or driving out of the state may have to ensure they do so before 8 p.m. as the state government has announced a curfew that will lapse at 6 in the morning. The directive is coming a few days after gunmen killed security officials in some parts of the state. Governor Yesong Wike has also asked political and community leaders in the state to provide relevant information on the activities of criminals in their localities to help the government fight crime. It's not unusual to have this sort of gathering at the River State Government House, consisting of traditional rulers, religious leaders and members of the state government's cabinet. On this occasion, the reason for the meeting is to find a way to put a stop to a problem which is fast causing sleepless nights in River State. And Governor Yenson Wike is seeking ideas from all on how to end it. All of us, our children, are the ones causing the crisis. Killing ourselves, courtism. It's the only way we can solve that problem is that all of you are committed to say, look, Mr. Governor, I can give you that confidence. We'll never let you. These are the people who are causing problems for us in Kandania. Uh, However, traditional rulers say lack of adequate support in the past has made the task a lot more difficult to surmount. In other cases, impossible. The efforts put in, in by the traditional rulers, chiefs, and leaders of Andoni in 2020 on this matter yielded no result. And the, the courts are taking advantage of this to inflict more harm on our people. The matter is one that has forced the hand of Governor Wike to make this pronouncement. In view of what is going on, therefore, and its implications to the security of the state and citizens, and in discharge of our constitutional responsibility in that regard, the government of the state has decided to restrict night movements into and out of the state from the land borders of the state. Consequently, a night curfew is thereby imposed and no person or vehicle is allowed into and out of river states from 8 p.m. to 6 a.m. from tomorrow, 28 April, 2021, until further notice. A necessary move, many may say, to contain the menace of cultists for the moment what the people would most likely prefer than time restrictions are strategies to put an end to reign of violence. And in Anambra State, Governor Willy Obiano says the curfew imposed on six communities in the state will help contain the rising cases of killings following yesterday's attack on Oyi local government area of the state by gunmen. The governor condemned the attack in very strong terms. The government of Anambra State condemns this heinous act in strongest terms and has ordered the security commanders 
to bring the criminals behind this regrettable incident to justice. While government commiserates with the aggrieving families, friends and relations who lost their loved ones to this ugly incident, I passionately appeal to everyone to please remain calm and go about their business without fear. In pursuit of this, I had ordered the immediate curfew to be placed uh, between the hours of 7 p.m. and 6 a.m. daily in Ibariam, Okuzo, Nteje, Umonya, Umweri, and Aguleri communities as a means of containing the security challenges in these affected areas. When the news at 10 returns, we have more stories from our Abuja studio. Plus, Central Bank disperses 33.45 billion naira to nine distribution companies for procurement of prepaid meters. And that will be on business. Please join us again. Welcome back to News at 10. Let's cross over to Abuja now. And here's Gloria, who is okay. Gloria. Good to see you, Ijoma. A coalition of civil society organizations has renewed their pressure on the National Assembly for lawmakers to expedite the processes that will culminate in a new electoral act before the next general election. The group stormed the National Assembly today to press home their demands, explaining that the failure to have a new electoral law will have negative effects on the outcome of the 2023 general elections. They want the Senate and the House of Representatives to hasten the processes that will lead to the third and final reading and forward same to President Muhammad Buhari for his accent. The next general election in Nigeria is about 20 months away and for these civil society groups time is fast running out for the passage of a new electoral law that will guide the process. The amendment has already scaled first and second reading in both chambers of the National Assembly. This group wants the federal lawmakers to expedite the process. The urgent need for reforming the electoral legal framework is founded on the broad-based consensus by Nigerian citizens. The seeming lack of progress in the National Assembly on the Electoral Amendment Bill is therefore worrisome reforming the electoral legal framework for credible elections is a top priority. National Assembly must pass the Electoral Amendment Bill now. The National Assembly must recognize that passing the Electoral Bill in good time will engender expeditious action by the executive. The speedy enactment of the bill will give the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, the legal clarity to adequately plan and efficiently conduct future elections. The group also lists some priority areas that the National Assembly should pay attention to in the ongoing amendment. No election can be termed free, fair and credible until that election is inclusive. And I'm here to present 10 citizen demands. Number one, Strengthening the financial and operational independence of independent national electoral commission. Number two, legislating the use of technology in the electoral process with particular emphasis on the his biometrics, voter reg register, electronic voting, electronic co collision and transmission of results. President of the Senate had earlier in the year promised to facilitate the passage of the new electoral act by the end of March. But that promise never came to fruition. This is the reason for this gathering at the National Assembly, to renew pressure on the lawmakers. Well, copy and paste, that's a trend in the academic circle, but the federal government is saying the days of plagiarism among students, especially at the undergraduate level, will soon be over, as the country has just launched its first anti-plagiarism software called Eagle Scan. The software was launched in Abuja by the Association of Vice-Chancellors of Nigerian Universities as a technology solution to plagiarism. 
The application of Eagle Scan by institutions is expected to improve academic research, provide a centralized database of Nigeria's scholarly documents from universities, and improve global visibility of research publications from Nigerian universities. To health matters, the federal government is restating its commitment towards increasing funding for the health sector to meet up with the challenging needs, especially as it battles the effect of COVID-19. This assurance was given by the Director General of the Budget Office, Dr. Ben Akwabuzi, who explains that health care financing in Nigeria has so far been inadequate to cater to the health needs of Nigerians. He says the budgetary allocation for health has barely exceeded exceeded 7% of the nation's total annual budget. On his part, the Director General of the National Center for the Disease Control, Dr. Chike Ihekwazu, appeals for long-term plans to meet up with the infrastructure gap in the sector. In 2021, the total allocation for the Health Ministry plus statutory transfer is less than 5% of the nation's annual budget. That's it from the nation's capital. It's back to you, Ijoma in Lagos. Thanks a lot, Gloria. The Nigeria Institute of Management is 60 and will be marking that anniversary with a lineup of programs here in Lagos. The president and chairman of council says a lecture and a luncheon will hold on Wednesday, July the 14th and Thursday, July the 15th, respectively. The NIM says it's celebrating 60 years of management and excellence and is poised for more. Here in this banquet room, the Nigeria Institute of Management is about to unveil a couple of activities in commemoration of their 60th anniversary. And joining in online are other senior fellows and the very special guest of honor and an awardee of the Institute, the chairman and CEO of Channels Media Group, Dr. John Momo. The 60th anniversary lecture will has celebrating 60 years of management excellence, poised for more as its theme and is expected to be delivered by Dr. Ngozi Okonjo Iweala. It is our desire that this anniversary celebration will lend a voice to the call for management excellence through identified best practices across the length and breadth of our dear country, Nigeria. As the participants are listened uh, through and bearing in mind the ethos NIM stands for, it was no brainer to ask what may be amiss as regards a desirable national management systems with consequences of worrying levels of insecurity and more. Insecurity didn't start today. Kidnapping didn't start today. For me, I think it has increased because we have not managed the problem properly. Clarifications done, programs and projections made ahead of the anniversary proper. It's time to unveil a new logo and jingle as Dr. John Momo does the honor and is assisted on site by the Assistant General Manager Operations, Mr. Kinsley Uranta. There's a need for efficiency in management. There's a need for integrity. There's a need for approbity. There's a need for accountability in people, for people who are in government or who are in the private sector or who are in leadership positions. And yet another recognition award for Channels Media Group and its chairman. I hear very presented to you with all joy and pride. Thank you. The Institute's culture these six decades have moved from PowerPoint presentations to Action Point. What is, however, a concern for them is how to get more public and private enterprise to imbibe the values shared. Olu Phillips, Channel Television News. And for the rest of the business news, here's Teniola Shobowale.
lot, Ijoma. A total of 33.45 billion naira has been released by the central bank to nine distribution companies for the procurement of 605,852 meters under the National Mass Metering Program. Figures obtained by from the CBN reports on the Monetary Policy Committee shows that 89.89 billion naira has also been dispersed under the Nigeria Electricity Market Stabilization Facility to 11 distribution companies to improve the electricity supply industry in Nigeria. The report adds that a total of 803.36 billion naira has been given to 228 projects across various sectors under the 1 trillion naira manufacturing intervention stimulus. In agriculture, the report states that the Apex Bank has dispersed a total of 1.48 trillion naira under the various agricultural programs in order to boost food supply and dampen inflationary pressures. Well, let's check in on the stock market now. The bear resurfaces today to halt the seven-day consecutive positive streak at the local equities market, largely driven by profit-taking on key banking stocks. Layo Adogoki tells us more. Thank you for joining us for the stock market report. Well, that's the bear's growl that's showing its dominance at the close of today's trading session, biting up 0.03% from the All Share Index, largely driven by profit taking in key banking stocks. Deals today were significantly lower than yesterday's at 3,477 volume and value, also lower than Monday's at 1.78 billion naira. The banking stock was the only one in the red for two trading days in a row, dropping 0.60%. Other sectors we tracked closed in the green. Access, Transcore and Fidelity Bank led the list of top trades, while shares of Prestige, Wemmer Bank and Royal Exchange were the most sought after for investors, leading the list of top gainers. On the flip side, Consolidate Hallmark Insurance lost 9.09%, top in the losers chat, as well as UPL and CHAMS. With listed entities making moves to keep shareholders happy with juicy dividends, analysts expect investors' appetites to be sustained in the last trading week for April. That's it for the Stock Market Reports. I'm Layo Adeguki. And that's business news tonight. It's back to Idioma for the rest of the news at 10. Thanks a lot, Tenyola. Still ahead on the news at 10, India's COVID-19 infections and deaths surge as international shipment of medical aid begins to arrive in the country. Plus other international news from our studio in London. Please stay with us. As India battles with the deadly second COVID-19 wave, the country has received its first supply of international aid to help its overwhelmed health system. Now, for more international news, here's Simon Pusey from our London studio. Good evening and welcome to the Channel Studios here in London with your international news around the world in five. A report from Human Rights Watch has said that Israel is committing crimes against humanity and apartheid and persecution against Palestinians. <laughs> The group said that Israel has a policy to maintain the domination by Jewish Israelis over Palestinians, including those who are its citizens. The executive director of Human Rights Watch explained that the oppression of Palestinians there has reached a threshold and a permanence that meets the definitions of the crimes of apartheid and persecution. Israel's foreign ministry has rejected the report as preposterous and false. The first international shipment of medical supplies aimed at stemming a devastating COVID-19 surge in India has arrived from the UK. Ventilators and oxygen equipment landed in Delhi, but far more will be needed, with India recording 320,000 new infections and deaths rising close to 200,000 overall. The US, France and Germany are among nations sending desperately needed aid. Meanwhile, the first train for Delhi, carrying around 70 tonnes of the life-saving oxygen, also reached the national capital. An intense fight has erupted in eastern Myanmar near the Thai border as ethnic minority Karen insurgents attacked an army outpost. 
Villagers said they saw heavy gunfire before sunrise at a military outpost, which the Karen National Union, Myanmar's oldest rebel force, later said it had captured and burned down. The clashes escalated days after the junta chief committed to immediately end violence in the country. Karen Group says 24,000 people have been displaced by conflict in recent weeks, including airstrikes by Myanmar's Air Force. The United States and Guatemala have agreed to establish a new joint border protection task force. I look forward to working together. In a virtual meeting, U.S. Vice President Kamala Harris told Guatemalan President Alejandro Guillamate that the United States will give $310 million in humanitarian relief to Central America. The two governments will coordinate law enforcement efforts to tackle criminal organizations whose activities help drive migration as well as open migrant resource centers to establish safe legal migration. Meanwhile, opponents of California's governor have enough valid signatures to trigger a statewide vote on his leadership. Gavin Newsom, a first-term Democrat, was up for re-election in 2022, but the recall means he will now probably face a vote this autumn. The campaign for a recall vote grew popular amid criticism of Mr. Newsom's handling of the pandemic. California's Secretary of State said that 1.6 million valid signatures had been verified, some 100,000 more than was needed. Brazil's health regulator has denied requests from several states to import Russia's Sputnik coronavirus vaccine, saying it did not have the data needed to verify the jab's safety and efficacy. The board voted unanimously to not approve the vaccine after technical staff highlighted serious defects, citing a lack of information guaranteeing its safety, quality and effectiveness. Brazil has recorded more than 390,000 deaths, the second highest number globally after the United States. The UN has warned that the slow implementation of the peace accord in South Sudan is putting the country at risk of a return to large-scale conflict. A new report calls for the arms embargo to be extended and for new sanctions against people who hinder the implementation of the peace deal. The UN said the political, military and ethnic divisions in South Sudan are widening, leading to multiple violent incidents between the main signatories to last year's ceasefire, the possibility of renewed war and nearly 100,000 people facing famine-like conditions. And finally, a glowing supermoon has dazzled night skies across Latin America. The extra-large moon rose high in the night over Buenos Aires, Santiago and Caracas cities. A supermoon is a name given to a full moon that occurs when the satellite is closest to the Earth. According to NASA, this year it has been called a pink supermoon, as it appears in April and named after an American plant, Pink Phlox, that blooms in the spring. And that's your international news around the world in five. Now back to the channel studios in Lagos. Many thanks, Armin. In celebration of her 25 years of winning a gold medal at the Atlanta 1996 Olympic Games, Chioma Ajoa has unveiled a series of projects that will produce more of her kind for Nigeria. At the press briefing in Lagos today, the Chama Ajuma Foundation announced an Olympic talent hunt for girls between the ages of 10 and 17, while the modern sports centre will be built to nurture such talent. Aimba Football Club will be without their captain Austin Oladakbo in Wednesday's crucial CAF Confederation Cup clash against Orlando Pirates of South Africa. Oladakbo will miss the game through suspension after picking his third yellow card of the competition in the 1-0 defeat to Libya's al Ahli Benghazi last week. Chelsea produced a composed performance to secure a fully deserved 1-0 draw and a crucial away goal to put themselves in a promising position after their Champions League semi-final first leg against Real Madrid. Chelsea overran Madrid in the early stages going ahead after only 14 minutes when Christian Pulisic kept his cool to steer home a clever finish. However, Real Madrid got back on level terms through Karim Benzema. And that's wrap in sports news. I'm Ayotunde Balogun. It's back to you, John. Thanks a lot, Ayo Tunde. And the main news again. Outrage trailed the killing of seven people today after suspected herders invaded an internally displaced people's camp in Makudi, Benue State. That's the news at 10 tonight. Thank you so much for staying with us. I'm Ijoma Onyato. Good night.